Hey guys, Frank Flegg here, founder of Ethical Property Partners, talking to you today about inflation. It's been over the news for the last few months. The Bank of England have been saying, you know, we had a report out in December, mid-December, saying that we've saw 5.1% inflation in November. And those of you that have been following the channel for a while will know that I've been predicting this for quite some time. In fact, I had Dave Allen, our accountants from Abe Allen & Co, on the podcast just a few months ago, talking about how the government will use inflation in order to erode the debt, the massive debt that we went into as a country when we went into the pandemic. So what does inflation mean for us as investors? What should we be doing and what shouldn't we be doing and what should we be expecting given that this is going to happen? And my prediction is we're going to see a lot more inflation because it is good for anyone who has debt and the British government has a lot of debt. Now who else has lots of debt? investors, property investors. So if you're sat there with properties, with interest only mortgages or repayment mortgages, it makes no odds, inflation is good for you. Now, most people look at the short term effect of inflation and normally it depends on what product you're on, etc. But normally inflation means that the Bank of England right raises interest rates the bank of england base rate 0.1 percent as i film this in mid-december will go upwards one would expect during 2022 the effect of that on people who have borrowings is that the interest rate goes up so your repayments are higher or your interest payments are higher that's to be expected we're at historic lows now if you've been following my advice for the last few years you'll have some mortgages on variable rates you'll have some on fixed rates for short periods of time and some on fixed rates for long periods of time, which means that any increase in interest rates, which we've known is gonna be coming for the last few years, it was never gonna sit at 0.1% for, for decades. As those interest rates kick in, your whole portfolio doesn't get more expensive overnight. Only the variable ones in instantly, or normally a month in arrears, some of your products might be three months in arrears, but they're normally pretty quick to raise the, the interest rates that you're paying and then your repayments go up. And then as the fixed rates drop off, they start going up as well. Now you can refix them, but obviously you'll refix them at higher rates. So that sounds like bad news, except it's not. Because what's happening to your debt in real terms is it's getting smaller. So if you have a loan from a mortgage lender, a buy-to-let loan of let's say £100,000, and you take, took that out 10 years ago, when a loaf of bread costs a pound, it's 100,000 loaves of bread. And of course, someone 10 years ago working would earn X amount per month. Let's just say they earn 2,000 pounds per month and that allowed them to buy 2,000 loaves of bread. In 10 years time, that same loaf of bread might be worth three pounds. 20 years, I'm making the numbers up, but you get the idea. So now a loaf of bread has gone from one pound to three pounds and we saw a 5.1% increase in the price of a loaf of bread in November in just one month, which is astronomical. And so that three pounds loaf of bread is now gonna be proportionate to everything else. So the person that was earning 2,000 pounds when a loaf of bread was one pound would expect to be earning statistically 6,000 pounds a month because now they can still buy 2,000 loaves of bread. Everything roughly stays in kilter with, what, with, with each other. And we've seen wages go up through the roof over the last few, uh, few months, couple of years actually, that we've been in the, the pandemic. But our loan hasn't grown. So our loan was 100,000 pounds, 100,000 loaves of bread, but now it's still 100,000 pounds in 20 years difference. So from 10 years ago to 10 years time. So it's still 100,000 pounds, but now it's not 100,000 loaves of bread. Now it's 33,000 loaves of bread. It's actually reduced in real terms by two thirds. And this is what the government's gonna do in order to reduce the, uh, the national debt, which is good for us as taxpayers. That's what we want them to do. But it has a double whammy for us. It's brilliant for us as borrowers. It's rubbish for people who have savings because obviously their 100,000 pounds in the bank was worth 100,000 pounds 10 years ago. And today 
it's worth the equivalent of £33,000. So it's rubbish for them. Yes, they'll have earned some interest over time, but we'll have to have paid some interest over time. So it's really good news for us on a macroeconomic scale. But what you mustn't do is run out of money in the meantime. And that's the biggie. You must not run out of money in the meantime. So how do you make sure that you can meet your rising interest payments on your portfolio? Well, there's a few things you can do right now. The first one, which is obvious really, is that rents are going up. If a loaf of bread was a pound and now it's three pounds, and again, I'm just using that as an example, the thousand pound a month rent is now three thousand pounds a month. And I'll give you an example. I have got a property that is currently at 535 pounds per month. That's what the guy's been paying for the last year or so. Market rent is, uh, has, risen quite significantly. I think market rent could be as high as 650 now. Over the last 18 months, that rise has probably been about 100, 115 pounds. That's remarkable because that property makes me about 200 pounds a month at 535. But at 650, it now makes me 315 pounds a month. That's over a 50% increase in my profit. And so if all of your rents are going up by that amount, then that's absolutely massive for you. If you can raise your profits by over 50%, that's brilliant. And we have seen massive rental increases over the last couple of years. So the first thing is you need to be putting up your rents. You can do it with your existing tenants. You can do it when your current tenants serve notice and um, advertise at a higher rate before you let the properties out. Or you can even serve notice on your current tenants. Now we're looking at potentially going into more lockdowns, more um, COVID restrictions. I wouldn't be surprised if what we saw a few months ago where it was a six month notice period and then a four month notice period. And now as of today, we're back to two months notice to evict a tenant under a section one notice. It could easily go to four months and six months. So if you've got a tenant who's not paying, if you've got a tenant who you don't think is gonna be a good fit for you long term, if you want to change how you monetize a property, now is not a bad time to serve notice. You, you will, if you're, if you're serving notice in, in December, you'll be getting vacant possession in February, two months notice. That's not a bad time. It's a buoyant time in the property market. People will be looking to rent, move house, etc. in February. Not a bad time at all. So you might want to consider that if you want to put your rents up lots. Now, you can put your rents up by 10% with the existing tenants. So you can perhaps do that. Check the terms of your tenancy agreements because it might say otherwise. But normally you can put your rents up by about 10%. And of course, if you do that this year, do that again next year, you can gradually get there. Now for me, 535 up to 650, that's going to take me two years to get there. So I'm quite pleased that the tenant's moving out because then I can remarket it at 650. However, I'm not actually going to remarket it at 6.50. I'm actually going to try it for a few weeks at 7.50 because most properties in my area where this property is located are going in one or two days. They are doing, letting agents are doing a two hour viewing. They're having six or eight people come around and they're getting approximately three to four applications from those six to eight people of which they're choosing one. Absolutely unbelievable. So that's the first thing you should be doing. You should be squeezing more rents from your portfolio. Second thing is consider marketing and running your portfolio yourself because instantly that saves you eight, 10, 12% of your gross rent. So that's another way that you can add to that. So I pay roughly 10% across my portfolio. I use many different letting agents. So if you think about that for a moment, 10% on 535 pounds is 53 pound 50. Well, that property only makes me 200 pounds a month. So I can add 25% additional profit just from managing it myself. And you have to think to yourself, how hard is it to do a two hour viewing, have six or eight people come round, reference them, move them in. Now, because it's a seller's market, because there are less properties on the market than there are people wanting to rent them, it's really easy to get really high quality tenants. You're not scratching around hoping someone's gonna come, your property's gonna fly off the shelf. So you can charge more money, you can be more stringent in your referencing and you can get better quality tenants. Um, recently, I rented a property because of my um, separation from my wife. So we've gone and rented, I've gone and rented a, a four bedroom furnished property in Derby so I can be close to the kids' school, etc. I was offering 
above market value to try and get properties and they were going before I could see them. The property that I actually secured on getting keys in a couple of days time, I had to put a monetary deposit down. I put a 338 pound deposit down without seeing the property, non-refundable, without seeing the property because it was gonna go that day unless I did. It's absolutely incredible how hot the rental market is in most of the country. This isn't just a Derby thing, this is in most of the country. And so those are a couple of things you can do straight away. You can manage it yourself, you can put your rents up. But what else can you do? So I've got a few tips, I've got a few ideas for what else you can do if you are wanting to maximize your monetization. Now, if you're wondering why I'm talking about monetization, it's because you need the four pillars of your business. You need to have the marketing and sales, the conveyancing, the legals and finance, your refurbishment, and your monetization. And in this episode, I'm talking about monetization. And you must spend 25% of your time on all, all four of those. Otherwise, your business is, your sophisticated property investing business is not balanced and you're not gonna get the profits that you deserve or your business is not gonna be as safe as it should be. So, what can you do other than manage it yourself, which I'm not saying is a great idea for everyone, but it's an option for you, especially if, you're in, if your um, mortgages start getting expensive and you get nervous, or putting up your rent. What else can you do? Well, I have noticed that there is a gap in the market for furnished properties. Now, most of the UK lets their properties on single ASTs on an unfurnished basis. They might have white goods, they typically have a cooker, typically don't have fridge, washing machine, dishwasher, tumble dryer, normally tenants bring those with them, not always, and the rest of the property is unfurnished. But I wanted to rent a property for six to 12 months whilst I go and find a really nice property that I can buy no money down to share with my kids when, when I have them. And that's not something you can do quickly. That will take me six to 12 months. I've started marketing already. I'll keep you updated on here on the kind of deal I do and what property I actually end up with. I'm quite excited about it. I've started identifying properties already that will suit my criteria that have been on the market for a long time where I think there's a motivated vendor. Um, it's a hard thing to do when you're actually going to live in the property, but the, the numbers are much higher. For example, I've found one that's about a million pounds, a couple of acres with it, outbuildings, quite excited about it. Um, now, the problem is I know that I might have to write a hundred, maybe a thousand letters to properties like that before someone says yes. So I'm in it for the long haul, I'm in it on a numbers basis, and I know it's gonna take me a long period of time. But if I'm only living somewhere for six to 12 months, I can't be bothered to go and pick out all the furniture. I don't wanna buy beds and sofas and all that. that fills me with dread. I'd rather pay someone else to do that for me and me spend some hours earning the money. Or I wanna rent a furnished house. And so that's what I've done. I've rented a furnished house, a bit more expensive, not a lot more expensive, and way cheaper than actually furnishing it myself. Because when I buy my own property, obviously my wife has stayed in the house that we, we currently own. And um, when I buy my own property, the furniture from my rented house might not fit in it, might not suit it, might not fit. And so I don't want to go to the expense, I don't want to spend the time, and I don't want to have the inconvenience of then having to dispose of almost new furniture, which is practically worthless later on. So the property I've bought has got all the white goods. It's got a dining table, chairs, it's got sofas, it's got study um, in, in the office, it's got a desk and a chair and stuff. It's got a TV stand, it's got a coffee table, it's got everything you really need to move in. I've got to put crockery in and I've got to put, you know, sheets and, and duvets. They've, they've got mattresses already. I can do that in about two hours. Oh, I've got to buy the TV as well. Um, but I can, I can literally go from getting the keys, walk around John Lewis for a couple of hours and, and move in. It's that easy. Now, I think that's a gap in the market and I'm going to be testing it. And I'm sharing it with you now. I'm going to be testing that gap in the market because I can buy furniture from my rented properties for not tons of money. You know, it's not a hard thing to do. You can even finance that for furniture if you choose to. There are companies that will finance it for you. Now, if there is a gap in the market, Market and you can charge quite a lot more rent for it, then I think that's great. There's also the factor that not many people are doing it, so you might find it a lot easier to get tenants. And this is what I'm gonna test and I'll let you know how I get on. The problem comes is if you can't rent it furnished and there isn't that much of a market for it. And this is where I think it's a great time now to test this hypothesis. And the reason I say that is because right now there's a massive demand for serviced accommodation. And so if 
you can't let it on a long-term single AST. What about, what about then trying it as serviced accommodation and letting it out as an SA unit, as a holiday let? And that gives you two bites of the cherry. It makes it a lot safer as a, an experiment to raise the monetization of that particular property. Now, our serviced accommodation is flying out at the moment. I cannot believe our occupancy levels. I cannot believe the prices that we're getting for our SA units. And so that is something that I would strongly encourage you to look at. Guys, there are some thoughts for you on how to maximize the monetization of your portfolio moving forwards. And if I can do one thing, if there's one thing you take from this video, it's that you do that quickly. Raise the monetization now, not when you're desperate and you're struggling to make your mortgage payments, perhaps quarter one, quarter two next year. These steps take time, and what you need is time and money to put them in play. And so you need to be taking action now in order to set yourself up for success in, uh, in 2022. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you know of anyone that would benefit from these sophisticated property investing tips, please do hit the share button, share it with whomever you can. That really helps us grow the channel. If you've enjoyed the episode, click the like button. And for sure, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe. Until next time, happy investing.